Welcome to the second episode of the Dark Joseph Ravine Show. As some of you may not know, I am personally from Thornhill, and there's so much going on in Thornhill right now. That all brings me to the reason why I have a very special guest here who is not only a superheroine, in my opinion, but a very big helper of the Thornhill community. Please give a special welcome to Laura Smith. Thank you so much, Joseph. <laughs> thank you. My that, pleasure. That, that was such a that was such a kind introduction, and I want to thank you for uh, for bringing me here today. Oh, of course. And, and welcome to the show. This. No, it's my absolute pleasure to be here. So yes, uh, great. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, Anything for a Thornhillier. Yeah, absolutely. For, a, for, a, for another Thornhillier, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So my first question is, what got you started with being a helper in the Thornhill community? That is a massive question. And, uh, you know, I think like a lot of people in Thornhill, we um, were very involved in everything. I've always talked about Thornhill as a community that makes something from nothing. We see an opportunity, we see an experience that should happen, we see a place where we can help, and we literally create something from nothing. And there's so many organizations like that, and you probably know so many of them as well. We have incredible not-for-profits that do literally God's work, like Amazing. You know, Rena and Danny and, um, you know, Kayla's. These places do incredible work, and people see uh, a place to do something, and they try and make things better. And um, so how I got involved in politics was just trying to do a little bit of that. I walked into uh, my daughter's school uh, as uh, what I thought was going to be a parent, and I walked out as a vice president of a nursery school. <laughs> so that was yeah. kind of my beginning of, of politics. And you begin, you begin to become involved in the day-to-day. -day. And I really have to say, my children gave me my kickstart unknowingly into politics. That is so amazing. And to me, yeah. you're such a superheroine for what you do for the well, community. Usually politics is very harsh in some ways, but you make it seem so positive and so like people can respect it. And that's so amazing because, you know, I always say whatever you do, it has to be something you're really, really passionate about. And I know you have a lot of passion for what you do. I do. I have a lot of passion for what I do. And I have, um, actually, if I can tell you a story, I have a friend, mm -hmm. his name is Sam and he's 96 years old. Wow. 96 years old, amazing. and I, I'm actually working on a private member's bill on dementia, and I'm constantly asking Sam, what do you do? How are you so vital? Like, literally, he's so smart, he's so articulate, and he's got everything going for him, and he's given me some advice, and I'll give you some, do you want to hear my advice? Absolutely, okay. I do. So, so Sam's advice has always been, be authentic, be yourself. People will like you when you're authentic. People realize when I you're agree. false, and they get that. 100%. Sam, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and he actually told me that, um, you know, you should appreciate what you have. Uh, not what you want, but what you have. 100%. Yeah. I do that every day. Yeah, every day. A want, want what you've got. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have a, a true value to life when you do that. Mm -hmm. And he always says to me, when you see an opportunity to do some good and you can, try and do it. So that's, Absolutely. that's kind of where that, mm -hmm. that's kind of where uh, I, I I started, and I hope I will end because I always want you know people people if you it's a calling, and um, they say that men run into politics, women get asked and they get mm -hmm. asked and they get asked again. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, and so uh, that was my condition, and so uh, you know I'm just trying to extend my my son always says you're just trying to spin your volunteer work into a full-time position, and I guess I've effectively done that. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually amazing as well. I also know that you also are very passionate about helping the youth and helping our future generation become better as well. As you probably aren't aware, I don't know if I ever told you, I was actually bullied as a child, and I suffered a lot of, you know, mistreatment from students, from teachers, and, you know, they didn't really understand me very well in the things that I was going through in my life at the time, and I always like to believe that you know, a little understanding and understanding a background story and where people come from and why people are behaving the way they are due to a background story, something that happened in their life that triggered that can come a very long way. So do you believe that the school system should get people to understand background stories, to find out ways how they can possibly help children become happier and to realize how to make, take their life to the next level in a way that, that 
all the negativity can go from their life and become happier and things like that? It's actually really interesting that you bring that subject up because right now um, th there's something called Bill 98 where mm -hmm. uh, it makes the school boards a little more accountable. It also provides for um, uh, another, another thing that's been brought in recently is care for children. Children have access, when they're in schools, they have access to um, certain assistance and they're extending that, even, even you know, mental health uh, assistance throughout the year, which is so important because I think getting back to my original story, which was literally walking into a nursery school with my daughter, I became involved because I wanted to give her the best opportunity. And um, I felt as a parent, nobody knows your child better than a parent. 100%. I have a P uh, yeah, I, I have a PhD in both of my children. And right. so when you can advocate for your child, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, when you when you have a when you have the ability to really uh, see what your child needs and advocate for them, um, you're stronger because of it. You're a stronger family, and you're hopefully creating a, a stronger future uh, community member, which I hope I've done with my own children. I'm hoping. I'm not done yet, but uh, we'll get there. I can definitely say I believe that you have done it because of how kind you are and how open you are to thinking about people. And, you know, sometimes people hold a stereotype that people that are famous are full of themselves and egotistical. But, you know, my publicist that you met earlier, she actually told me many celebrities are the nicest people in the world. And they have to be because anything wrong or bad they do could be held against them. You know, and it's unfortunate people hold this stereotype that, that people are that are successful are full of themselves. It's not necessarily true. It may be true to some extent, a couple people, but most of them have to be nice because the behavior belongs to the public eye, not to them. So I believe that many celebrities and many people in the public eye are one of the nicest people. You know what? Getting back to my friend Sam, mm -hmm. he talked about being authentic, and you are 100% correct because yeah. when you're authentic, people see that. They mm -hmm. identify that. I think people are smarter. And actually, I, I, I specifically think that the youth are very smart. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because they're very honest. Mm -hmm. And my daughter um, has a very strong point of view when it comes to very young children. They always, some, they always tell the truth. So I respect that. And uh, I always give, uh, I always give um, the youth, specifically the very young children, mm -hmm. the opportunity to say their piece because, mm -hmm. you know, they speak the truth. Absolutely. And that's exactly why I've always been so passionate about helping them as well, because I tell people I had a very bad past growing up and I wouldn't want anybody to go through the things that I, I've been through, specifically the youth, because the reality is, is that one traumatic event can ruin someone for a lifetime, you know. And so I always say, please be careful and be cautious and try to think about even educators, a message to all the educators, too. Please be careful how you treat them, respect them, make them happy, try to be understanding. Understand don't demand respect from someone just because they're younger than you. Understand everything takes time, everything's a development, everything's a build. You know, nothing's an overnight process. And also, most importantly, if you're going into education or teaching or administration, make sure it's your passion and it's something you really, really love. You know, the sad reality is many people in the Thornhill community get jobs out of pity or get jobs they're not competent doing. And it's a sad reality because, you know, I always say whatever profession you go into, you've got to do it with all your heart, with all your soul, like if you weren't even being paid. You know, celebrities actually say love something so much like if you weren't being paid for it that is and you truly have to love what you're doing mm -hmm. but you know what getting back to your point about people in thornhill i disagree i think we are so hard working in thornhill mm -hmm. i tour uh businesses mm -hmm. um and um restaurants and all kinds of startup companies mm -hmm. on a regular basis mm -hmm. and they all work so hard and they not only work so hard for today but they're working hard for the next community of people that are coming and they're constantly asking me uh, what they can do mm -hmm. so that they can expand. So, uh, you know what? We have nothing but a booming uh, group of industries in Thornhill, mm -hmm. biotechnical. Uh, we all know that Thornhill is the food capital of Canada, in my opinion. That's yeah? wonderful. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, for yes. sure. And you know yeah. what? You just filled me with the ray of hope that there is people who really are into positive changes yeah. and people that 
you know, who are into this, you know, maybe because I've grown up with so much negativity all my life, that's why I thought that people aren't receiving jobs for the right reasons. But now I see how much you really fill people with this ray of hope. There is good people. Don't think the worst. Believe me, there's good people. And that's what I love about what you do. And I'm You're so thankful kind. for You're coming. You're so kind. Here. You know, and you know what? Just, just to reiterate uh, for anyone watching, um, I'm a director with a, with a sports club, and uh, mm -hmm. it's always been our motto. When you see something, say something. Yes. Uh, because you know what? Uh, that is so important. So many, so many kids don't. We talked about the truth of children, mm -hmm. and I think that it's important that they always have a voice. Exactly, because that's the whole point about helping the youth. Everybody wants to be understood. I always say, if you agree with this, a little understanding can come such a long way and make a huge difference. Well, speaking of youth, I think my, our entire office, and I'm looking at my chief mm -hmm. right now in the audience, um, yeah. it, we're all, other than myself, <laughs> we are all under 28. Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the youth, uh, the youth keep us, keeps us ticking. They also have the stamina to keep moving, which mm -hmm. is really important for yeah. uh, a person. You just, you, uh, my ankle just cracked. <laughs> it's so, okay, uh, that's okay. Don't worry. No, but I'm talking about my age. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know what? You need, you need young people to keep you young. So I, I, I appreciate the youth injection that happens in uh, our office because mm -hmm. it's very important because I need that energy to come back at me so mm -hmm. I can continue to move forward in a fast way because otherwise I'm just going to slow down. And that's get, speaking to my dementia bill. You always want to keep moving. You always want to keep your mind moving. 100%. And, and yeah. that's also what I'm all about. Oh. I don't like to harp on the past. I always want to keep moving forward because you never know what new adventures lie ahead. And so that's what I always encourage everybody to do. Forget We're on a new past. adventure right now. Yeah, forget yeah. the past, move on with the future, because you never know what amazing things you can come by. I think that's a very positive thing. But, and my friend Sam would yeah. also agree with you. You're yeah. in the present, always live for the present. Yes. Uh, but my father always said, be mindful of what happened before you, because that's a learning experience. Absolutely. Everything you acquire, even mm. the mistakes, yes. are always going to benefit you and help you with the next uh, move you make because making mistakes are actually a good thing. They teach you for the future and they, they teach you uh, to move forward in a positive way.